Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hasha Ali Khan. So now I'm starting the next law that is law of equimarginal utility. Last video I have explained about the law of diminishing marginal utility. In economics, these two laws are very, very important. In almost every examination, they will ask a question regarding either law of diminishing marginal utility or law of equimarginal utility. So a student should be perfect in understanding these two laws. So if you have not watched the earlier video, I suggest you to go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject business economics, select the topic law of diminishing marginal utility. Watch that video till the end. Definitely you will get a lot of confidence on the subject of business economics. Now, before explaining the law of equimarginal utility, take a screenshot of the points which I have written on the board so that you can maintain a permanent record and before examination if you review, definitely you can do excellent in examination. Come on, now I'm starting the law of equimarginal utility. Equi means equal marginal utility. The law of equimarginal utility explains as to how <clears throat> a consumer distributes his limited income among the various commodities in order to get the total maximum satisfaction. See here, <clears throat> we have unlimited wants, but to satisfy those wants, we want an income. But income is also limited. Here, limited income and unlimited wants. So, a person has to satisfy from his limited income. The question is, how a person can be able to spend his limited income on different commodities? He cannot put all his income in one commodity because he has to satisfy different wants. A person has different wants, so he has to spread his limited income among different commodities so that he should get maximum satisfaction. Maximum satisfaction. So this law of equimarginal utility explains how a person <clears throat> will get maximum satisfaction by spending his limited income among different commodities. So many commodities are there. We cannot spend all our money in one, I mean, commodity. We have to spread. We have to distribute. For example, a person needs food items like vegetables he requires, suppose meat he requires, education he requires, then for rent, rent he has to pay. All these are the school children, the fees of the school going children. All these are the expenditure on the head of the family. The head of the family will have limited income. Now he has to spend his limited income in such a way that he should get maximum satisfaction. So how a person will get maximum satisfaction? By spending his limited income among different commodities. That This law will explain that only. <clears throat> it states that a consumer will distribute his income between different goods in such a way that the utility derived from each good is equal. That means the utility which is derived from each of the commodity will be equal. So he has to distribute in such a way that the marginal utility of each of the commodity must be equal. Marshall states, again Alfred Marshall has given the law of diminishing marginal utility and also he has given the law of equimarginal utility. So Marshall says, if a person has a thing which can be put to several uses, that means a person is having a thing, thing like income. But this income can be put to several uses. With his income, he can spend in purchasing a car. He can spend the money in purchasing an air conditioner. He can spend the uh, I mean money on purchasing a bike, on purchasing goods or on travel. 
so so many users are there then he will distribute it among the users in such a way that it has the same marginal utility in all now if the person wants to get maximum utility out of his limited income he has to distribute his limited income in among various commodities in such a way that the marginal utilities of all the commodities should be equal the marginal utility of all the commodities should be equal this is the definition of law of equimarginal utility given by Alfred Marshall so again once again I'll explain the law because ultimately it depends the complete question depends on the law later on we'll explain now definition if a person has a thing which can be put to several uses here we assume the thing is an income which can be put to several uses because money can be spent for anything which can be put to several uses in he will distribute it among the users in such a way so he is having limited income he has to distribute his limited income in such a way that the marginal utility of all the commodities must be equal when all then the marginal utility of all the commodities are equal he will get the maximum satisfaction that's it now according to this law <clears throat> mux by px is equal to muy by py mu stands for marginal utility and x and y are the goods so mux the marginal utility of commodity x px price of commodity x muy marginal utility of commodity y py price of commodity y both should be equal marginal utility of x is equal to marginal utility of y the consumer is in equilibrium when marginal utility of money spent on each good is equal so he will get maximum satisfaction the consumer is said to be at equilibrium when the marginal utility of commodity a is equal to marginal utility of commodity b is equal to marginal utility of commodity c like that it goes on so a person will substitute all these commodities in such a way <coughs> that the marginal utilities of all the commodities should be equal in that case the consumer is said to be at equilibrium and when the person is at equilibrium he will get maximum satisfaction that's it so I have explained you about the law now assumptions the law of equimarginal utility depends on some assumptions the first assumption consumer has limited income and spends all of it first we don't have unlimited income if we have unlimited income there is no question of economics we can be able to purchase all the goods we can spend as much as we like on any good but this will never happen in this world in this world everywhere the money is limited the income is limited out of the limited income he has to spend on different commodities the so first assumption limited income second marginal utility of money is constant that means the marginal utility of money money satisfying power is same that means the money will satisfy every person equally that is the second assumption third consumer is a rational human being and he has the complete knowledge about the market the person on whom we are applying this equi margin utility the person should be a rational a normal person he should not be an abnormal person whose characteristics are features are completely different he should not a normal person how he will behave in his normal life he must have the perfect knowledge about the market conditions what are the prices of the commodities then prices of the commodities remain same there should not be any change in the prices of the commodities lastly wants and habits of the consumer are constant when we are applying this law of equi marginal utility the taste the habits the preferences of the consumer should not change during the i mean checking of this law the person's taste and habits should not change constant 
So these are the assumptions on which the law of equimarginal utility is based. Now I'm going to explain you about the law in a tabular form. By taking an illustration, we can be able to explain the law of equimarginal utility. Explanation of the law. Let us consider an example of marginal utilities of consumer A who consumes units of bread and butter within his limited salary of rupees 5. A person, consumer A, he is having two commodities, bread and butter, and he is having limited income of rupees 5. Now the question, how he spend this 5 rupees on bread and butter by comparing the marginal utilities now in this table you can see first column number of units one two three four five marginal utility of bread marginal utility of butter here units are rupees because he is having five rupees so one rupee one rupee if he spend he will get 25 units of utility from bread and 20 units of utility from butter for one rupee if he spends two rupees then marginal utility of bread will be 20, marginal utility of butter will be 15. For 3 units, 15, 10. 4 units, 10, 5. 5 units, 5, 2. These are the marginal utilities, hypothetical, imaginary. These figures are just an imaginary figures. So, these are the marginal utilities of bread and these are the marginal utilities of butter. Now, it is clear from the table that the consumer has 5 of these. And he wants to spend entire income on two commodities, bread and butter. Two commodities are available, bread, butter. He is having a maximum income of only rupees five, not more than five. Now, how he will spend five rupees in order to get maximum satisfaction? Now, when he spends one rupee on bread, he gets 25 units of utility. If he spend one rupee on butter, he will get 20 units of utility. You can see here, one rupee on bread, he will get 25 units of utility, 20 units of utility. In, his, in this way, when he spent 3 units on bread, the total marginal utility is 15. And when he spends 2 rupees on butter, the marginal utility is 15. Now you can see, if he spend 3 rupees on bread, how much utility he is getting? 15 units of utility he is getting by spending 3 rupees on bread. Same 15 units of utility where we are getting in butter. In butter we are getting 15 here. So for how many rupees we are getting 15 units of marginal utility? 2 rupees. For 2 rupees spent on butter he gets 15 units of utility. If he spent 3 rupees on bread he will get 15 units of utility. That means utility is same. Out of 5 rupees 3 rupees he should spend on bread, 2 rupees he should spend on butter. So 3 rupees bread, 2 rupees butter. The utilities are same, 15, 15. In that case, he will be at equilibrium. Consumer A will be at equilibrium, maximum satisfaction if he choose like this. So here you can say if he spent 3 rupees on bread and 2 rupees on butter, the marginal utility of bread and butter are equalized, equal. Hence, he gets maximum satisfaction. That's it. This is the law of equimarginal utility. Now, importance of the law. How it is important? It, it facilitates a producer in making rational decisions regarding the substitution of various factors of production in order to produce optimally. A producer is there. He is having different factors of production. Now the question arises, how, which factor of production should be used by how much so that the total production should be optimum. The producer has to take a decision regarding how many units of every factor of production should be utilized. How many units of every factor of production should be utilized to attain the maximum production. Here factors of production are limited. We don't have unlimited factor of production. We have limited. So how to utilize this limited factor of production in order to optimize the production? For that purpose, the producer can use equimarginal utility. Secondly, 
Exchange of goods and commodities is based on this law. When exchange of goods or services is being done, then this law equi marginal utility is more helpful. Now limitations. Apart from advantages, benefits, there are some drawbacks of this equi marginal utility. Just in the previous video, also I explained you the law of equi the law of diminishing marginal utility suffers from some drawbacks. Similarly, the law of equi marginal utility also has some drawbacks or limitations. The first limitation it is not applicable to either indivisible goods or durable goods wherein calculation of marginal utility is difficult. <clears throat> first of all, the law of diminishing marginal utility and law of equi marginal utility assumes the utility is cardinal. Cardinal means measurable, that means satisfaction we can measure. But in reality, it is difficult to measure the satisfaction. Example, a person is thirsty. He drinks a glass of water after a long period of thirst. Can we measure how much satisfaction he will get? He, he will get? No. He can feel the satisfaction, but we cannot measure in specific variable. Same is the case for equi-marginal utility. Here also we assume that utilities are measurable. Here we have given the numbers for this utility. But how to calculate, how to give the number? That is a difficult point. Similarly, it fails in its assumption. Marginality of money is constant. Second assumption it says here, the marginal utility of money is constant, but it is not. The money will satisfy different people in different manner. Some people will give more importance to money. Some people will give less importance to money. So we cannot say the marginal utility of money is constant. That's it. So in this video, I have explained you about the law of equi marginal utility. So far, five videos I have prepared on unit number one. The first video on the meaning, the characteristic, nature, importance, scope of business economics first video second video micro and macro economics third the differences between micro and macro fourth video prepared on law of diminishing marginal utility and now equal marginality this marks the end of unit number one inshallah next video will start the next unit but before that i want to inform you that i have started a new channel by name hans accounting institute so if you go to the search of youtube type hans accounting institute my videos will appear so visit that channel subscribe that channel you can get a lot of informative videos from that channel and don't forget to subscribe if you are not yet subscribed this first channel on which so many videos i have uploaded in the playlist you can see Okay, inshallah, in the next uh, video, I'll start unit number two.